Today we're talking about something relatively new. It's been out for a couple of months, but I'm not the fastest at churning out videos. Busy life, I guess. It's the Element Helix 4 to 16 by 44 first focal plane rifle scope. Is the hype really worth it? We shall see. Roll that intro. Ballistics Canada. I'm your host Jason and if you're new around here hit that subscribe button but more importantly comment on the video ask questions I'll do my best to get back to all of you. As usual I'm going to give you a little bit of info about the company behind the product I'm talking about in this video. Element Optics is relatively new in the scope manufacturer scene. Launching in early 2020 their team is made up of Matt Dubber, famous for his hunting YouTube channel in South Africa. He's won several air gun challenges and is one of the founding members. Shane Keller, also a very accomplished shooter, taking first place eight times at various EBR events and has medaled at RMAC as well. Henrik Bengtsson, don't know how to say it, has a military background with the Swedish Armed Forces for over six years and had two sniper deployments. Johan Axelsson, who's widely known along with his father, Frederick, in their involvement with FX air guns. Johan specializes in 3D CAD design work and machining. Brad Bonner, a dealer relations guru, has brought many connections with industry experts. A global company with their team spread between Sweden, South Africa, and the USA, bringing in their experience, knowledge, and skills to the table to form Element Optics. So this is not my first Element Scope. Originally I bought the Element Helix 6 to 24 by 50 and it has been my workhorse ever since receiving it from Air Gun Source Canada just about a year ago. Now this new Helix has much different setup than the original. To start, it's a first focal plane scope and my first modern one that I've used. All my other recent scopes up until now have been second focal plane scopes. There's pros and cons to both reticle styles and typically first focal plane is higher priced and more sought after by hunters and target shooters alike. It's a 4 to 16 magnification, which in my opinion is perfect for you hunters out there. The lower magnification than its predecessor creates a larger field of view and allows you hunters to acquire your targets faster. Most air gunners shouldn't need much more than the 16 times. However, when you're on the bench doing accuracy testing, I sure love the 24 times of the other scope. The tube is a 30mm tube, which seems to be the most common size these days. It allows for a decent amount of light to pass through the 44mm objective lens. The new one is a smaller objective bell in comparison to the 50mm bell on the second focal plane helix that I have. The difference doesn't really seem to compromise much in a way of a bright sight picture. When comparing the size on the two scopes, the new version is slightly smaller and lighter. The original second focal plane is about 26 ounces and this newer first focal plane version is 23.8 ounces. 2.2 ounces doesn't seem like a lot, but believe me, every ounce counts, especially for you hunters out there. The scope is made from an aircraft grade aluminum, allowing for extreme durability in a lightweight package. The new Helix is slightly shorter as well. 4 to 16 magnification is 14.2 inches or 36.06 centimeters. And the 6 to 24 magnification is 14.3 inches or 36.32 centimeters, which is extremely similar in length. Makes me wonder where the extra two ounces of weight was saved. This new Helix doesn't skimp on the features, even though it's lighter. It still has extremely solid clicks with the tool-free resettable turrets, hard mechanical zero stop, side focus, throw lever, sun shades, flip cap, bikini cover, which is quite a lot of accessories considering its mid-range price point. Just like its older sibling, there's absolutely no mush in the turrets and the clicks are extremely positive. Now let's talk about the reticle for a moment. Being first focal plane, they need to create a reticle that is not too thin when it's zoomed all the way out 
and one that's not too thick when fully zoomed in. If you're not familiar with the difference between first focal plane and second focal plane, I suggest you watch this video to help you get a good idea. Up here, up here, I don't know, somewhere up there. In its most basic form, the reticle will grow and shrink in a first focal plane scope. And the reticle remains the same, completely static when looking through a second focal plane scope. The new Helix comes with one of two APR 2D 4-16 to reticles, one in MRAD, which is the one I'm using, and one in MOA. They're very similar in look at first glance, but features either MRAD or MOA holdover points. The MRAD has a click value of 1 to 10 NRAD, which equals 6 MRADs per revolution. The MOA click value is 1 quarter MOA, which equals 15 MOA per revolution. Here we have the elevation and windage adjustment levels on screen, and oh yes, the minimum parallax is approximately 15 meters. Now to be completely honest, I rarely crack an instruction booklet or a manual, but because I really wanted to learn as much as I could about this scope, I took a look through this one, and it comes with detailed mounting instructions, including torque specs and the do's and don'ts of zero, zeroing tips, zero stop adjustment, etc. There's 18 pages of information, which is like double or triple the amount of what most air gun manuals come with. So if it doesn't answer all your questions, the boys at Element will gladly help you out. They're all really intelligent and helpful and easy to talk to guys. Reach out to them using social media or their contact page at www.element-optics.com. I've got the scope set up working on my Caden and it's working great. As I said before, this is my first uh, modern first focal plane scope and it took some getting used to for me. And my question for the hunters is, with a 26 foot field of view at four power, is that reticle too small? I mean, I'm also that's not a deer hunter, so I don't have that experience of trying to lock yeah. on a target that's moving at a target distance. Shooter. I typically target shoot at 50 yards or less, or pesting at 20 yards or less. So tell me in the comments, do you prefer the first focal plane over the second focal plane? And what application would you be using this scope for? I'd love to hear your feedback. I would think that a large field of view would be very beneficial for you hunters out there. The throw lever also makes it easy for quick magnification adjustment. As a target shooter, I love most scopes to be on full zoom. I mean, I like to be right up on what I'm shooting. However, hunters need to be able to follow or locate prey, and a larger field of view is always helpful. Comparing the two scopes side by side, they almost look identical. With the new Helix with the slightly smaller package, the quality level is to be the same as far as I can tell. And the performance is excellent on both as well. So depending on what you're after and how you intend on using the scope, both of these make a great choice for that sub 750 Canadian or sub 500 USD price point. And one of the best parts of the Element lineup and peace of mind when buying something from these guys is the Platinum Lifetime Warranty. It's a bumper to bumper full coverage under normal circumstances. There's no registration, no proof of purchase or transfer. Basically, if you have the unit in your possession and something goes wrong, they'll fix it or replace it for free. In conclusion, now having one of these for over a year and using the new one for just about a month now, I'm going to say that you can't go wrong with either of these two scopes. There's a reason why the hype is so large and the fact that these scopes are so popular. They were designed by extremely skilled and decorated shooters and built to a high quality standard using great materials. I get that a lot of you air gunners out there don't really see the value in spending more for your glass than you do for your guns, but believe me, once you do invest that type of money, you won't want to go back to the inexpensive options that are on the market. Many a professional shooter has stated that the glass should cost more than your weapon, and I tend to agree a little bit on that, unless we're talking like an FX Impacts or some of those high-end air rifles. I'm not sure I could bring myself to pay $2,000 plus for a scope. Hell, I haven't even done that with a firearm or an air gun yet either. Here in Canada, you can pick these up at Air Gun Source Canada. And there's a couple other retailers that carry the Element lineup as well. I want to thank you for watching my videos. Please take a moment to check out some of my other reviews. If you like what you see, subscribe. If you got a comment, please feel free. 
I'll try and respond to everyone. And lastly, smash that like button and tell YouTube you like my content and have a great day. Yeah.